So the last 18 months, we've received a lot of emails and calls regarding schools that have lost interest or um, students that have stopped playing their musical instruments and stopped coming to band. And so this has prompted us to put together a workshop and concert package that we've been doing throughout this year up until the current lockdown. And so this is what we'd like to talk to you about today, how our workshop and concert package can really inspire your students and the students of your community um, to not only continue playing the instrument, but for new people to pick up an instrument and ultimately for it to inject some new life into your band program. How's it going music educators? I'm Peter Ornstein. I play the Barry Sax in the Hot Potato Band. And uh, I'm Simon Garley and I'm the drummer slash manager of the band. We're all about reigniting acoustic instrumentation on the touring scene so that we can breathe new life into brass music. Let's kick it off with a video from a recent workshop and concert we did at a primary school. The Hot Potato Band workshop and concert series is a tailored package that offers an inspirational and world-class experience for students and teachers. As one of Australia's most renowned street and stage performing brass collectives, we will transport your very own school hall into the streets of New Orleans. We offer a workshop and concert package that can be tailored to each school's unique context and set of needs. The workshop is for music students from curricular and co-curricular programs. We would like to demonstrate the connection between music and movement, and so the students will be interacting with us and each other from the outset as they learn about arrangements of rhythm, harmony and melody. The back half of the workshop is dedicated to sectionals with the aim of going deep on a piece of music from our sheet music catalogue. We focus on articulation, rhythmic accuracy and dynamic contrast all while doing classic dance moves. We end the workshop experience with a whole band rehearsal of your chosen piece of music and when packaged with a concert, the school band will actually play this at the end. We came here and the kids had already done some work so they already sounded good, they had the notes down but I just loved how they could see us adding some sparkle to the music and the performance of it so that was fun. My favourite part of today was just the interaction that we get to have with the kids, the fact that we can line both bands up and jam on something that they've been working on and, you know, show how we can add different elements to it. Uh, I think both interacted really well together and was super fun as a result. When we deconstructed the song into you know, the rhythm, the bass line, and then we brought it all together and the kids just were amazed at it all coming together. The best part of today was seeing a guy in the back row in the, in the band, in the workshop. Um, we said we'll start to play When the Saints Go Marching In. He was like, I hate When the Saints Go Marching In. And then we performed it with them and by the end he was dancing around with his instrument and just loving it. So that transformation to see in person was really cool. The workshop and concert packages can be mixed and matched into a custom package for you. Don't hesitate in booking a vibrant and unique experience for your school community today. We've already seen our workshops transform and inspire band programs in the short time that we've been doing these workshops. Um, I want to read a couple of quotes to you now. Uh, this one here from St. Uh, Joseph's Nudgy College in Brisbane. Hot Potato Band started their workshop with a bang, engaging our students from the very first second. Our students were immersed in an experience they had never had before, surrounded by expertly woven rhythms, timbres, and textures in an engaging and an energetic package that is the Hot Potato Band vibe. So much was gained from this experience, both our musicians and our wider school community being able to engage with the more unique style of music and performance, one that was still contemporary, familiar, and entertaining. I would highly recommend this experience for any music department as it pushed our musicians to new levels of understanding and appreciation of music and inspired them all to engage with music in new ways. And here's another quote from Floraville Public in Newcastle. An explosion of musical excitement hit Floraville this week when the Hot Potato Band brought their vibrant, exhilarating performance workshop to our school. The Mini Miners band and Because singers spent the day moving, singing, dancing and collaborating with the performers, ending with a rousing concert involving all of years 3 to 6. 
The band's energy and engagement with the crowd, band, and singers was like nothing we've seen in live performance for a long time. Returning ex-student Luke Bartley, represent, on the Lucifone, uh, shared his musical journey from Fall Riverville Public School to the heights of touring band, inspiring many of our students to pursue a musical future. Thank you, Hot Potato Band, for the buzz of excitement here this week. I think that part of it's inspired some small children. I think it's easy to read, but that's actually really beautiful and something that we're really stoked about. From touring band to inspiring students in the classroom slash school halls, well, it's actually been a long journey and Simon here is the manager of our of our band and he created it back when he was in high school. Simon, can you take us through the history of Hot Potato Band? All right, so the, uh, the beginning of Hot Potato Band is an interesting one. The idea of having roaming musicians was something that I've always wanted to do ever since I was in high school. And I came from a school that had a lot of um, like musical influences we had you know one of the great jazz musicians in Australia James Morrison come and play with us every year and so I saw I, I was definitely inspired by a lot of great um, brass players um, and we had a great music teacher that was uh, running a huge stage band at my school and so for me I really wanted to come out of school thinking you know putting together a a, um, a band that kind of reflected my time at school as well um, but take all the best elements and then see how I can make it even more fun however when I did leave school, I didn't necessarily think that a roaming brass band was going to be my number one gig. The opportunity came uh, in 2009 when I was asked if I could put together a band for a winery. The, the idea was that the, the winery didn't have any access to power where they wanted us to perform. And so for me, I saw that as an opportunity. How can I get a, a brass band together that didn't require any power at all and to kind of roam the space? Um, and musically interact with people. Now, when this was booked, it was about four weeks out from the actual event. I didn't have any time at all to pull together um, a lot of people uh, or a repertoire. And, and in the time that I did have, we managed to get um, six people, including myself, and we had learnt four songs. The gig itself was booked for four hours, and you can imagine <laughs> what kind of problems that poses um, when you've got to play these same four songs for four hours over and over again. And so this, to a degree, kind of inspired the musical interaction and the performance of the band. And so what we did is, we, 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 in the one or two rehearsals we had before going to the show, we tried to find ways to change up the songs. Um, and the, the easiest and best way that we could figure out how to do that in the shortest amount of time possible was that if everybody took a turn at leading each song and taking it in the direction that they wanted to take it in um, and then just let the song evolve and see what happens with it. The hopes for this was that people wouldn't then know that we were playing the same four songs over and over again <laughs> or if they did at least they would enjoy it the second, third, maybe fourth time they heard it <laughs> in a different way and so that combined with also the idea of like how can we interact with music um, you know, whether it was just movement, especially on the spot, um, there was the interaction with people uh, that were listening. Um, we were lucky there was a, it was a wine event. So, you know, for, for myself as a drummer, I could get up and tap on wine bottles or tap on wine glasses and get people clapping, um, moving as well. Uh, and so there was a lot of, there was a lot of interesting um, things that we could do to interact with people to kind of keep a nice flow for this whole four hour gig. Now, once that was done, I never really kind of thought that we nailed that gig. I thought it was like, that was cool, we did it, but I don't know if I, I really thought that was gonna be the hit. Um, but as it turns out, we ended up getting a lot of calls um, straight after that. And before we knew it, we were booking out um, our months with these shows. We didn't really know what these shows were. We were kind of developing along the way and trying to experiment to see what was actually working. What, what was it about those roving shows that people were really enjoying? Um, and then really focusing, how do we, how do we keep doing this and, and nailing these, these performances? Um, and so this sort of like led us to getting bookings for weddings, You'd, bookings for corporate functions, Christmas parties, the works, anything, anything you could think of um, that required a band or something that was unique and different, we got the call. Um, and that then led us into this whole world of um, 
performing in different environments. You know, sometimes we'd have to walk into a, a totally dead, flat, lifeless corporate room and we had to bring the energy. We 100% had to bring the energy and we couldn't rely on anybody else in the energy in the, in the, in the room to draw the energy from. And so situations like that led us to evolve again. How do we um, make sure that whenever we enter a room, whenever we perform or we play a gig, how do we bring 100% every time? And what that did is it pushed people over the edge and into the world of wanting to then share the energy back with us. We actually had this nice back and forth. Um, not something that's really easy to do because for, for a lot of the, uh, those performances, you're doing things that are like ice breaking um, events. Essentially, you're doing things that might look like, they're, like for anybody else would be embarrassing. You've got to get past that and make the things that you think are embarrassing actually cool. And that actually makes people feel like, oh, I can join in. I feel comfortable that I'm not the only one dancing. If I'm dancing already, it's going to be okay. You can come dance with us, you know? So finding all these these different icebreakers at these events. And then there were obviously the, the times when we were doing uh, performances at weddings and parties where people are already, um, you know, in a lively mood and are, are ready to party even more. And those were a lot easier to a degree, although you do take that energy up a notch again. And so there's a lot of learning lessons. Uh, we, we learned a lot along the way at all the different events that we were playing at. Um, so basically from there we spent a lot of time just performing at different events, street festivals, outdoor events, indoor events. There was a time where we played almost daily um, over at Sydney's Luna Park, which was a stretch in itself. <laughs> but as weird as it was, it also led to that, uh, you know, our evolving um, culture within the band. How do we perform as musicians together? And it also strengthened the bond that all the musicians had within the band. Um, and all the while, you know, over the years that we were doing this, I never really saw or made a goal. I didn't say, listen, we need to get to this point. This is going to be where we're, you know, our, uh, this is where we're heading. And to a degree, I think it's almost been kind of good that we've had this sort of uh, flow, that it's not really, nothing's really expected. We kind of just seem to keep stepping up and stepping up um, naturally, uh, naturally uh, and organically evolving um, just by performing, performing as much as possible. Um, and it wasn't until 2014 now, so what's that, like five years later, that we, uh, we got asked to play a festival up in Port Macquarie. It's called Festival of the Sun. And now this is a festival that would house large stages and, you know, have large acts, large bands that were playing on these stages. And here we were, we were a roaming brass band that just were playing acoustically on the street. And we found that when we played this festival, people came away from the festival saying, wow, that was like one of my favorite moments of the festival was actually dancing with this brass band on the street. And it made us think, okay, well, we're, we must be doing something right. There must be something there that is, um, that is connecting with people on a totally different level um, and that we should really be following and chasing, uh, you know, this idea of what we're doing, I guess, you know, trying to really build up on what we're doing. Um, and so this sort of led us into writing our own music. And so from this point, it wasn't until the, the year after, 2015, and I, I'd, I'd um, written one song. <laughs> it's, this is one song that I've been playing with for a little while called This Is How It Should Be. And the idea was, if we can get people on the street to like our own music, then this is gonna be really great because we've take, we, we know what works, we know what kind of style and genre works, we know how to perform uh, the songs. Let's just make a song that is um, that we, where we've taken all those elements and put it into this one song. Uh, so that's what we did, and, and we took it to the same festival this, the, the year after. And, um, and, and it, just, but it was just incredible. Everyone really loved it. People were singing the song back to us. It was the first time they'd ever heard the song. Um, and so then the singing was a whole other world. We've been a band for, for four, five to six years now, and we hadn't had a singer. We'd just been kind of singing here and there and getting people in the crowd to sing along. 
But now we're, we're starting to realize that a great way to engage with your crowd is, is to have a singer. It's almost like, you know, for, you know, people will understand instrumental music, but they really connect to the instrumental music through a language that you understand if you're not a musician, which is the voice. You know, if, if you can connect through uh, to your audience that way, it's just going to level us up that next, that next little bit. And so we put lyrics to This Is How It Should Be. We invited a, a local singer, uh, Dylan Wright, to come and sing along on that. Um, and we recorded the song and released it and then decided, why don't we just try and get onto a stage from here? Let's see what happens next. Let's try and get into a venue. We'll mic ourselves up. We'll, you know, invite an audience. Hopefully people want to come and buy tickets to come see our show. So let's take you inside one of our rehearsals. We all get into a very tight space and jam things out and so this is the last rehearsal of this is how it should be um, pre-recording so you can see all our instruments and how we interact um, in terms of those layers that simon was just speaking about um, and this really this process that you're seeing in the studio is exactly how we write music to this day all together in one small room <laughs> Before you knew it, we were selling tickets to venues. Was you know things were just starting to happen. People wanted to come and see us within the venue, um, and and again, people would sing along to all the songs, and that just gave us that energy again that we're doing something right here. Um, but it wasn't just the songwriting that did it. The performance side of it was a huge part of the of our success. Um, because people were really connecting with us um, through both. And I think it really, it really makes a difference to have both those elements, the, the, the music and the performance. So Simon mentioned that um, people just started singing it you know, at Festival of the Sun in Port Macquarie. Uh, it's super catchy. And still to this day, people come to our shows and, and blast it back at us. Here's a shot from the Domain at Lost Picnic Festival. Um, in the rain. As we then decided, how do we keep experimenting as a band? How do we make the band um, relate relatable to to the wider public and to the audience? Because, like as I said, we're a brass band. Not many people listen to brass bands, let alone listen to brass at all, um, unless you're a musician or you you know you happen to really be into the genre. Um, and so, we were really kind of dissecting a lot of um, the music that was being played on the radio at the time. And then what we would do is find a way to take that, cover that song in a brass band style and kind of bridge the gap, not take it into a totally different world where it is only a brass band genre, but try to connect that brass band genre with the pop genre and allow people to kind of like ease people into the idea of what a brass band can do. You know, what is a sousaphone? How, how can that work in a brass band? How does... How do, how do the horns cover certain lines, you know? And yet we still have this central point, this, this singer who can sing the song so that everybody knows straight away what is the song, what, what you know, they can really connect to the song. So we took this song, uh, Chet Faker's um, Talk Is Cheap. Now this song is completely electronic, uses synths, um, samples, all bits and pieces, and then the voice, Chet Faker's voice. 
and we thought, okay, how can we now change that over to the um, to the brass band outfit? And so we, you know, dissect the song. The bass part goes to the sousaphone. The you know the horns cover the chords, bits and pieces like that. You obviously have the voice doing the voice, and we built this song in a brass band style, um, and that I think was the first step um, for us to to on the journey that we are on now. You know, everything before was very much kind of like, we're not sure what was going to happen, but as soon as we released this song, we kind of had a clear path. All of a sudden we were like, this is it. This is what we've got to do. So let's listen to a little bit of Talk is Cheap uh, covered by us. Uh, this was recorded actually at Northern Beaches Christian School. Uh, so it's just a classroom uh, that we went after the hours and cleared all the furniture and, and got a whole bunch of mics together and, and got it done in a live take. So you're seeing us in our live uh, format, but uh, recorded in a classroom. If you're interested in the, that classroom, go check out It's All About The Gig presentation, uh, where we talk about what we did in that space as well. Start a chain with my thoughts
So as we toured around Australia, New Zealand and places around the world like Bahrain, we started to develop a fan base that uh, were quite dedicated and came to our shows. And um, along the way, we started to not only do covers, but also do original music and write more, more original albums. One of the key points for us was when Ben, our current vocalist, um, joined the band and he brought a whole new element of energy and pop to the band. Uh, he he had been on The Voice, so we'd seen him, seen him on TV. Um, and when he when he joined, he just brought um, some really nice songwriting capabilities and and an element of production that um, was really really cool. So um, one of those an example of that was uh, one of our most popular original works. It was Ritual, and we shot this in Parramatta Prison, uh, and we'd like to play you a little clip of that right now.
So after we finished Ritual, we, we then proceeded to create a whole album and we started touring this album and we got into a really great flow of, of um, writing music, um, rehearsing regularly. We were playing shows multiple times a week um, and the machine that was Hot Potato Band was you know, chugging along really nicely. And uh, we then spent uh, yearly we were going back to New Zealand, which was a place that I was, you know, was very keen for the band to start making an impact. Um, and we, we'd been there 2018, 2019, and then we were lucky enough we we managed to get into a festival called Womad uh, in New Zealand uh, for 2020. And um, alongside that, we'd booked a, a two-week, just over two-week long tour in New Zealand. And this for us was kind of like um, we were on this upwards trajection. Um, everything we were doing was, was sitting really nicely and we were playing great shows, writing awesome music that people wanted to listen to. Um, we were selling out these shows and now we're doing this in a different country. Um, and then playing one of the festivals that the band has always wanted to play. And of course, like everything in 2020, um, it all kind of came crashing down. We... Uh, we managed to play the festival, which was really lucky, but the day after we, we got one more show in at, um, at a venue in Auckland, um, where we then got the announcement that back home, they were asking everyone to come back into the country before they start closing borders. And at that point we had to shut everything down. We, we canceled all the shows, uh, everything to do with the tour, um, and then came home into a, into a two week quarantine where we then discovered that months upon months upon months of shows are now going to have to get cancelled because of this um, this growing pandemic around the world. And so this uh, was a bit of a, this was a bit of a hard thing to swallow to try and actually figure out like, you know, we're at the peak of our careers and now we have kind of hit a bit of a, a bit of a rock bottom situation where you're not really sure where you're going to go from here. Um, and it took a couple of months of, um, uh, you know, of reflection I guess you know everyone just taking the time um, to think about what had happened and then how to kind of move on we started to diversify um, and so this is what led us on to the idea of running workshops with schools and me and Simon were just chatting in a cafe one time when we were allowed to and uh, we were talking about my experience as a music educator um, and in the band and came together and thought of the workshop and concert package idea and we started to put it in fru into a fruition. And so in the sort of throughout this year, we've seen that in action uh, pre-lockdown and uh, we'd like to talk to you about it today um, in terms of the content that we offer and just the overall experience that you uh, would go through with us um, to make something happen in your school, local community, wherever wherever you, you, you want, basically. <laughs> we go anywhere. Um, right now, we'd take any gig, wouldn't we, Simon? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, we put together um, basic pack packages, but we're improvisers. And so we want to take a little nimble approach to this as well. So the basic package um, comprises of three different stages of workshop. So you have a mini, standard, and extended, and that's just various times to allow us to almost like an a la carte menu, just insert different content, uh, different experiences that we've designed for school students. And that's, that's just because each school is different uh, and ha each um, cohort of students is also different. And then even within that cohort, you've got a wide range of abilities. And so we've designed things that can differentiate, that can, uh, we can go deep or as shallow as, as need be. Uh, depending on the situation. Um, so the, the concert and workshop that you saw in the video that we played at the very first um, part of this um, session today, that was a half, like a little mini concert and mini workshop for a school that we did uh, here in Sydney. And that was just designed to inspire young musicians, to encourage the band members that were in their school band, uh, and also just to um, have some fun in the school um, and we did that through 
um, playing when the Saints go marching in. And there's a little quote that I, I had in that video that was talking about a person who wasn't very interested, who was kind of a typical uh, school student in, this, in the respect that um, doesn't have a lot of energy, is just going through the motions day to day. And so we came in and what, our whole shtick is to <laughs> cross the border. That's what we spent so much time over the last 10 plus years doing. We're crossing that fourth wall, so to speak. And, and so we do that with school students. We show them how, how we move. We show them how much energy you can have while playing music. And so the quote in the video, I talked about how he went from just like, oh, when the suits going much again, to stoked. He was dancing around with his instrument and just loving it. And, and that's what we love seeing and have loved seeing throughout this year is just students um, be inspired, be changed from uh, playing with us from hearing our music um, and taking away little tips about performance expression, the way we articulate notes and arrange music, and even as deep as improvisation and the history of our band as a roving unit and how that reflects you know, our roots in New Orleans music as well. The other thing that we add on to a workshop is a school concert. And the school concert is designed to um, promote the school band, um, to generate some sort of interest um, in the school band and we do that through an interactive um, style concert S similar to say music of Viva would do except we bring our own little hot, hot potato um, quirkiness. The other thing we noticed um, since 2020 and the, and the pandemic is that a lot of um, school bands started to fall apart. Um, a lot of kids weren't practicing anymore uh, and definitely weren't playing or performing together anymore, um, let alone being able to be in the same room and, and um, or at all, they weren't really even being um, inspired to play their instrument. And so we, I, I actually, myself and, and Pete, we both work um, quite closely with schools and we, we, we started to notice that, you know, kids just weren't interested in their instrument. Um, and uh, they just, they didn't see a need. And so this kind of also gave us a bit of uh, energy to kind of put this program together to kind of inspire kids to do music again, especially with organic um, and acoustic instruments. Um, taking some time away from screens and just communicating with their their friends or their family through music. Uh, it's, it's a really important thing that I think that we're, we're moving further and further away from. And so trying to keep kids involved in in their music programs as much as possible and also seeing the different ways they can use music in their lives i think that's a really important thing um, for them moving forward so over the years we've had lots of emails and calls regarding um, do you have any sheet music available for your music <laughs> we'd always say no because um, we're you know we come from the oral tradition and so we just jam with each other and occasionally we have some sheet music um, that we use as a core of an idea, but I never really fully realized on sheet music. And then we started, as we started to write more original music and actually f flesh out our songwriting, we did actually start um, notating our, our pieces of music. And so James, um, our tenor sax player, has worked really hard um, over the last couple of years to transcribe slash write um, our original music onto notation and we've developed a sheet music store that houses all of his hard work. Uh, and so this is the idea behind this is just to give direct access to our music for young people, old people, just anyone around the world. And we've had a big global audience actually interested in this. Uh, and just to inspire them through uh, giving them access to what we play, the notes we play, uh, but also uh, coupling that with some oral resources as well. So we've recently um, started to branch out into the school um, market in arranging our particular ensemble, our 10-piece brass band, and transferring that to a concert band arrangement. So um, putting the melody on different sections and and um, yeah, exploring that avenue. So we've got one up. This is how it should be, and we're looking to do more as well. And this is a little video of James, the tenor sax player who's our ranger, introducing our sheet music store. It's one of my favorite videos of all time. Oh, hi there. 
You would have received tens, maybe hundreds of requests over the years for the sheet music to your favourite Hot Potato Band songs. Well, now we're making it easy. We're announcing the release of a library of sheet music at our new online store at hotpotatoband.com. Can I go now? Shh, if you're quiet, you might just be able to see the moment a quaver is born. Come on, take a look. You can choose just a single part for your instrument to play along, or full arrangements, complete with score, detailed horn and drum parts, lead vocal line, lyric sheet, and MP3. So we've got a, a couple of clips here for you now of um, different schools that have uh, purchased the, the sheet music that we um, have up on that web store. Um, the first one here is of Adelaide High School, and they, um, they got the charts for our song Mystery Man. And uh, as you can see in the video, or you will see in the video, you'll see there's different instrumentation, like bass, guitar, piano, uh, keys, um, and, so, and guitar as well. And so you'll be able to see what they've done with the charts that we've provided them. So as part of booking a Hot Potato Band school workshop or concert, we actually um, gift a whole package of sheet music for one of our songs um, to, for you to learn in advance and for us to workshop with you, um, if you if you want that in the workshop. If not, then you, you can design a tailored program for you. Uh, it's all, all the details actually are on our website. If you go to hotpotatoband.com forward slash workshops, you can actually look along with me and check out um, some pictures, some quotes, but also some details about each package. And we have a, a download you can um, check out in your own time. And the little book now button, which comes to me and my inbox, and we can start a conversation about what a workshop and concert might look like in your uh, context. Uh, and then just to let you know, we just book around our tour schedule. So nothing's off the table, really. We just um, shiggle it in and make sure it works. Um, and we try to book a few schools in the in the area. So if you're a smaller school, uh, we've done combined workshops in the, in the past or combined concerts. And uh, really nothing is off the table for us. We've done many, many gigs in strange places. <laughs> and we expect this um, program to take us all around Australia uh, into the nooks and crannies as as well. So uh, please get in touch and we'd love to um, yeah, chat further. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch our presentation today. Uh, we over here at Hot Potato Band really think that our concert and workshop series is a, is a great um, solution for keeping kids in music um, and a great way to strengthen band instrumental programs within schools. So if this interests you and you'd like to book us for your 2022 schedule, then please get in touch for our website and we'd love to connect further. We're going to leave you now with our latest music video, a song that we wrote during these times that we're in currently, um, all at home and doing demos and then we brought it together in a short window that we were able to and we made a music video and released it. It's called It's Your Own Body. Skirt. A lady should be classy in the street. 